In this video, we're going to take a look at the render output option in SpeedGrade CS6. The first thing you're al always going to do is make sure you render exactly the part of the project that you would like in the final output. So in this case, you just need to look at the in and the out points on the timeline. And if you want to render something rather specific, like just really an individual shot for preview purposes, you just double click on it. That will set your in and out points accordingly. And obviously, you can move it around to whatever you need to have isolated for rendering. And then you go into the render options. So I've got my output tab here. You can also really just use Control R for that. As with a number of things in SpeedGrade, hotkeys will get you there faster. And then the first thing you're going to do is you're going to find out where you want to have the final output to be located. So in this case, I'm just going to go for uh, my RAID drive here, which is E. And I don't have the Foley yet on the system that I'd like to be using for it. So what you can do just quickly is to do a right click just here on the arrow, and then use New Subfolder. Just give it a name. We'll just call it Temp Output. Done. And then from here on, you have multiple options. So let's talk through them one by one and see what they will do. So obviously, you can give your output just a name. And then SpeedCut is going to render everything just in one large chunk to whatever format you're using for it. So let's just say Athlete. That's the name of my project. And this is a test render. So I'm going to call that Athlete Test. I could actually now immediately hit Render. And that would be my output to the chosen format that's already pre-selected here. I chose to go for H.264. But there are tons of other options to make this work. So let's go back here, delete that, and see what this M button does. As soon as you click on it, it actually activates the metadata rendering engine. And it's got tons of interesting options. If you just click on Common, you'll see the most frequently used ones. And for example, I can just say, I want to render according to just really the original file naming of my material on the timeline. So I can hit Source Path Element 0 here. You're going to see an output of it. So it's actually hard to go wrong. You can easily double check if this is also exactly what you've got here down on the timeline. And if you actually use your timeline controls to go back and forth on the timeline, or really just move the playhead, you'll notice that the preview is updating. So if you want to check and make sure that this is exactly what you want in output, then you can do so. So let's talk about format options next. The presets that are installed with the application are really just a couple of the typical ones. And a lot of people would prefer to render to Cinean or DPX. But obviously, for preview purposes, for example, that's just way too heavy. So um, let's open the output menu for additional options. And as you can see, we've got a number of options here on top level menus. So let's just take a closer look. For example, on the frame sequence formats, you've got obviously Cineon, DPX, JPEG, but even OpenEXR is a possible opportunity with the various opportunities to compress it on output. You can also go for something simple as a PNG, but you can also uh, save out to TIFF and even with. Uh, the opportunity to compress and to go for really high quality output because eventually that's all that speaker is about great pristine quality, right? So you got the opportunity to do 16 bits per channel and even you might call it exotic, but for some workflows, this is really cool to have. A 32 bit floating output is also possible. So a lot of options. If you want to have this as just a standard default for the next time you're going to be in the render output, let's just name that. So we're going to name that TIFF32. And I'm going to save that. Once I do, you'll notice that this is now showing up in my regular preset pull down. And just looking back at some of the other options, if you have QuickTime installed with the system, all the codecs that are coming with the QuickTime system and everything you put on it on top of it, so as soon as you install a codec, you're actually good to go to use that in SpeedGrade. So a couple of other things that are interesting. Um, you can actually use a burn in. So as we've seen in one of the other tutorials, you can actually put burn in display on top of the picture. And you have an opportunity to also put that on output if you want that present with your render output. And obviously, for proxy workflows, for offline workflows, that's a very handy thing to have. You can also bake in a calibration lookup table in case you're using something where the device you know this is going to be watched on is not having the opportunity to turn on and off lookup tables. So you can bake it in with your material. You also have opportunity to work with timecode in various ways. So let's choose an output format that has that. You'll notice that the render output section is actually changing 
uh, its display according to the file format. So whatever is possible with the format you're choosing is going to show up in this area here. So you will have a variation there. Don't get confused by this. If you're not seeing a timecode pull down, it's because you're not rendering to a format that is timecode enabled. So DPX, of course, is. And as you can see, I can sort of remaster by using the timeline position timecode. But I also have the opportunity to use something like source timecode. So that's a very cool option as, for example, using um, SpeedGrid to create proxies offlines for an NLE. It's very nice to be able to just say, keep the source timecode intact. You can immediately create a conform workflow with this and obviously also feed uh, the rest of the pipeline with this methodology. Other options available. So in any kind of way you need to remaster or adhere to the original media, you can certainly do so. Now let's take a look at the framing options here. And most of them really explain themselves pretty nicely, but let's just go through them. So for example, if you're working with a format that has a pyramid structure, for example, red would be a really good example here. So the R3D data is actually structured that way. If you want to speed up your rendering because you're not creating final output, then you can easily say just render off the half proxy layer or the quarter proxy layer, which is even faster. And if it's really just for tiny web previews, an eighth of it still might be fine, and then rendering is just super fast. You can set your pixel aspect ratio, so in case you need to create output that is not exactly square pixel, you can choose just from the format defaults that are delivered, which will cover pretty much everything you need in that department. And then finally, you can decide if your final output is going to be rendered according to input file size, so we'll keep everything the same. Or you can also restructure and say, hey, this originally has been HD, but I actually need a 720p output of this. As soon as you do, if you're downscaling, or upscaling for that matter, typically we're going to look at downscaling, you also get other options activated. So we can do letterboxing, we can do pillar boxing. Uh, and you also keep it at square pixels or really just warp it into the space available. So for whatever kind of scenario here for creating final output, you got all the options available to you. Finally, yet again, differentiating between speed and quality, which you'll find is true for SpeedCrate in a lot of departments. You have full control here. So if I want to create the most pristine output, I'll keep it on online quality. If I want to make compromise in some of the things like the algorithms used for scaling, like the algorithms used for debearing if you're working with raw footage, I'll click on offline and that's going to create the output a lot faster with a compromising quality, but still it's creating very nice looking imagery. So, and once you're done, well, that's the magic button. You click on render, and you're going to see that render in this case as I've chosen offline quality rather quickly. You can at all times pause this if you need the machine to do something else. In the meantime, obviously, you can stop it. And that is the rendering in SpeedGrade CS6.